My dear boy, you are a clone. Mostly human, but part cartoon. I love cartoons. Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh Overview. Today, let's take a quick look at the Hasbro Marvel Legends Con exclusive Mojo World 4-pack. Four 4-pack? Four Mm. Now let's start this off by saying I already reviewed the retail version of this Mojo. Ooh! But I still wanted to get this because it's a different paint job on Mojo. I was interested in seeing the differences. That and I needed this Dazzler. And long shots, but we now know that he's coming later on a retro card with some slight changes. When it comes to Mojo, it's going to be more of just a comparison. If you want more in-depth on the figure itself... I already did that. But there's also something to be said for this awesome packaging. Yeah, the fancy trash around my toys does jack the price up, but when it's something like this retro feeling, I'm a sucker. I may end up keeping this because you remember these TV, well, if you grew up in the 70s, 80s, you remember TVs like this where you had kids in order to go up and change the channel. But it wasn't so bad because we only had like two or three channels. So whatever. There's your knobs. They are embossed, slightly raised. Just enough to give you that feeling. On the side, very nice wood grain. Luxurious. Ooh. Same on top, just like an old TV. Same on the other side. Some wear and tear down at the bottom where it's been dragged around on top of a table or something. On the back, that's where you realize there is kind of a sleeve or slip. On the front, they did a good job of it just becoming part of the picture. But the picture's also under there on the back it's covering some of the artwork it's telling you what is in the package mm. i don't think it was an accident that baby wolverine wasn't featured on the front of the package cut the tape and slide this off that way you get a full look at the artwork and a little bio a little history it's a nice picture it's a nice presentation i haven't even cracked it open i know there's more of this inside getting to that you gotta cut the side of the tv open expose all those tubes is that what TVs had back in the day and we get a box we saw this with the retail version of mojo everything's wrapped in tissue disassembled you have your legs which come out kind of creepy <laughs> the thing that catches my eye is the remote i don't know oh well okay it's dazzler in this package again the buttons are kind of raised give you that tactile experience you get a mojo world guide and i'm guessing this yeah there you go there's long shot oh but it's meant to be a couple of issues stacked up so if you put this on a shelf yeah. the potentate of programming that's gonna get old really quick and there's another little neat background if you want to use that quite the difference in color scheme the retail version very muted very i hate to say plain because there is some shading here and there and then the color on the metal bits but yeah, it comes off as a bit more simple. On the exclusive, you have these spots painted in. The yellow's much more deeper, much more in your face. It jumps out at you. I think there's a precedent for both. This seems much more 80s comic book. This goes more 90s, I think. What I like even more are the colors added to some of the cables, the wires going through in places. There's some red and blue up here on the head, some red and blue and green back here, a little bit of red here on the back, and that continuing just in places on the back. The retail version doesn't have any of that. It's just plain plastic sculpt. It has the same little red dots of paint and then this meter, whatever the hell this is. Oh, wait, there's some extra. On the exclusive, there's a yellow dot and a green dot. That's not on the retail version. And then they both have the red and blue dots on the front near the turn on crotch switch. I guess it'd be easier to side by side the alternate heads. See how the retail version, there's the paleness to the skin, just silver to the hair. The exclusive has some of that extra shading, the dots, the blue and the red wires. When it comes to a teeth and tongue and wiring on the face and those eyes, it's about the same amount of effort. It's just two different styles. Well, not sculpt-wise, just paint. The gray silverish plastic for the chair pieces seems about the same. And then the scorpion stingers up on top, blue and red, it's the same setup. If I had a gun to my head and had to choose one within the next 30 seconds, I gotta go with this one. I, again, you put this on the shelf, it, it stands out. But I do like this one too because it reminds me of those <laughs> dreary years in the X-Men where everything was kind of grungy and just psh. next let's take a look at this this is the equivalent of counting a Grogu as a character in a multi-pack because 
I guess, oh, well, there is a ball joint right there. I was going to say, it's not even an action figure. It's just a figure, but there's your action. Some ball joint looking up. And side to side. On top of that, the other characters in this pack is so firmly 80s slash 90s that this just looks out of place. This is not the original X-Babies Wolverine. This is a modern Scotty Young take on Wolverine, which I guess is still called X-Babies, but... Oh man, the clashing styles here just whoosh, whiplash you. The sculpt is, well, it's not bad. It's some tubes, some tubes. In fact, this looks almost identical to the gentle giant Scotty Young Wolverine. A lot of people saying you could probably use this for the Exiles version. Mm, well, I may have to slip over there because that team's kind of lacking at the moment, but even that's off a bit, you know, color-wise and style. Why is this hole in the back? Is it an accessory or something? Can he stand up on it? Oh, no way in hell. With that crunch and these leg bends and this big old noggin, yeah, it's just gonna... That's why it comes with a stand. Huh. But let's get to one of my main reasons for wanting this pack. This design, as of this moment, is exclusive to this pack. Oh yeah, we know what these are. Oh, extra hands and... I've seen these so many times, but when they are character specific like this, I can't complain too much. I kind of like it. Look at this. <laughs> the blue nearly matches my background. Perfect. This is the Dazzler I've been waiting for. Outback is one of my favorite eras, and even though her costume and hairstyle did change and kind of evolve over those years, this is what I think of when I think of Dazzler. This also works too, especially hairstyle-wise, but the jacket, it gives me arcade vibes. Not arcade the X-Men villain, but the actual arcade game. And I think she wore this in Pride of the X-Men too. And there may be comic appearances still. This is my mind's eye version of Allison. Exposed with an elbow covering glove while the other sleeve comes down to here, shows some skin, and then goes to a fingerless glove. That's the 80s, baby. Then the rest of the costume is fairly simple. You have the yellow stars on the blue spandex, a red band over here for no reason. I want to say the torsos are about the same, but then the legs have pinless double knees. More than that, well, pinless, again, I don't mind so much, but double elbows. Yeah! I'm always down when it adds more articulation to the overall figure. And moving away from the hinge and swivel elbows of most females. Heavy detents kind of had to break those free. But most of all, it's the hairstyle. Just that Art Adams vibe. She still has the bandana because, again, 80s. But the hair flowing on top of it with a slight wash to it. Oh man, that's pretty. Kind of a deer in headlights look to the eyes, but you get away from... Well, <laughs> of course, everything's gonna... No, uh, focus focus. Getting this close, everything's gonna look a little bit weird, but the eyeshadow and the eyebrows and the lipstick, you get away a little bit. I'm gonna say it again. 80s! I got my Dazzler. Well, okay, I'm a big fan of Disco Dazzler too, but we'll get to that. The eyes are way nicer than the previous Dazzler, but I brought her out because if you did want to get that later version for Outback, even though I think when her hair got shorter, there was less costume. Didn't her midriff get exposed at some point and the gloves arms changed up i think it just changed artist to artist slightly high but that still works articulation as you just saw there's a ball at the top of the neck with a hinge underneath can look up hair gets in the way forward and down way down Ooh, tilt side to side pin out to the arm rotates around hinges up to there swivel at the bicep beautiful double elbows go all the way up swivel at the wrist hinge in and out dumbbell mid torso doesn't give a lot of crunch nice tilt rotation ball coming out to the hip goes up to here back out swivel at the thigh double knee again with the detents very tight but can but but can but yep hinge at the ankle goes back goes forward forward facing pin for rocker for accessories out of the package she has two fists those just pop right out and then she comes with two splayed out hands which work perfectly with her little dazzler effects mostly yellow have some pink have some green would i like bigger more elaborate dazzler centric effects yes but these will work on the shelf i guess you have this clip piece that can go around this oh no Let's use this one. In fact, I don't want to stretch that out, so let's just put this over the arm and thread the hand through it. Flip this one around backwards just to change it up a bit. That just works, especially in a display like mine where everything's kind of scrunched together. This doesn't take up a lot of real estate. But the other major reason for me to get this set is long shot because I've been waiting forever 
for a new updated long shot. So much so that you will not see a comparison to the old Toy Biz version because that's long gone. I guess I foddered it at some point, tore it all up, trying to make a version I liked better. And those parts and pieces are gone to the fodder box. But initial reaction, it looks like it was well worth the wait. Something I noticed right off the bat, the knife sheath with the strap going around the leg, you'll try to put legs down in a neutral position and that's gonna get in the way. It's hitting the crotch right there. But all you gotta do is bring it down just slightly and then it'll miss the crotch piece. There you go, both legs straight up and down. But look, it's a long shot. It's essentially an 80s jumpsuit with a star on it with some straps and a weird bandolier with these dagger things in it. But that's long shot. Well, okay, and this mullet, and while I'm close up, look at this thing. Isn't that glorious? Well, not even business in the front. Kind of party in the front. Super party in the back. The face is recognizable, like there's a real world counterpart, but we see that with a lot of action figures. Here, what's throwing me, I, I like the face, but the eyeballs, the iris, the pupils, seems a little cartoony, a bit big, but at the same time, <laughs> and maybe I'm drawing from the comics back in the day, but that that boyish charm, that fish out of water look. He's wide-eyed. I may be projecting a bit. I'd like that that comes across a little. Have the popped collar, which again is signature long shot. The zipper all the way up the top with the zipper painted down the front. The star is sculpted on, which makes me think, well, you can't use this for anything but long shot. Have the shoulder patty look. Again, I, I, it's a bygone era. They did have to move the wrinkle sculpt out of here, which does throw it off slightly. But if they didn't do that, you wouldn't be able to raise the arm because of plastic on plastic violence. Yeah, go! But then you have wrinkles to the sleeve coming down to a cuff. Same thing with the pants kind of bunched up here. Okay, it's smooth around the thighs because he's a muscular guy, but then down around the knees where there's a lot of bending, of course it's gonna bunch. Very nice boots. They also have a bagginess to them. There's a pouch for no reason. You have some mojo snacks in there or something. Pointy toe, again, leaning into that boot look. And on the back, yeah, just a bunch more black plastic <laughs> with wrinkles. The belt is sandwiched between the crotch and the torso, so it doesn't slide up and down. Yeah, it's not a bad thing. They painted the silver buttons and the buckle. I, I, oh, and that buckle too. Just little things like that I can appreciate. They also did it down here on the knife sheath buckle. Oh, and I almost didn't point out the silver button painted on the boots too. Just a little touch of color. Then there's this bandolier around the torso. It is a separate piece, I guess. If you got rowdy with it, maybe you could slip it off. Well, I didn't even have to get rowdy with it. Oh no, the mullet has it locked on. Not a problem at all. So if you like a sleeker long shot, there you go. Or a better look at the torso. Either or. The little handles or grips on the blades are painted all the way around, even on the back. There are a couple missing because... He's holding those in his hand. Got some silveriness to it. And the three fingers. Another very important staple when it comes to long shot. Same thing on the fist side. Zzzz, not a problem. And the way it's sculpted, it lays nicely on the torso. That it's not gapping up. Well, okay, there's a little right there. In most poses and positions, it's not going to get in the way. In fact, when you crunch down, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I figured it would shoot up right here, but it doesn't. While we're talking articulation, there's a ball at the top of the neck with a hinge underneath. Slight softness to the hair and the collar, but both of them working back there. Yeah, you get up about that far. Forward, though, all the way down. Some tilt. Thought for a second maybe there was a ball at the bottom, but I think the neck is just plugged in. Or it's stuck, one or the other. They're side to side. Hand coming out to the arm, rotates all the way around, then hinges up to there. Double elbow. Oh, all the way up. Some swivel and some hinge. Hinge mid torso, crunches to about right there. Arcs back, cut at the waist, rotates. Ball coming out to the hip allows for this and this and this. Not bad. Cut at the thigh. Double knee goes, oh, all the way. Kicks his own lucky ass or belt swivel at the top of the boot but it acts like it doesn't want to turn all okay maybe you can or i'm breaking my toy whatever hinge at the ankle it's gonna go back that far forward about the same and front facing pin for rocker for accessories like we've already seen two fists one with blade sculpted in it again those pull right out then we get an alternate grip right hand and an open splayed left that I don't know, the fingers seem really thick. Comparing to the fist, you can see the difference in the finger size. Thumb's about the same. It's the fingers. The grip hand is for this knife. You got the blade, you got the handle. <laughs> I'm describing basic parts of a knife. That works really, really well. He's into blades, what can I say? If you're not wanting to hold the knife, there's a sheath, 
slides right down into there. That is going to keep you from doing any side kicks, but it looks good. Size wise, Wolverine stands at about two and a half inches. Dazzler's about six and an eighth. Longshot is about six and a quarter. And then Mojo's about six and a half to the top of his actual head. Eight inches deep, and then about eight inches wide, leg to leg. Here's Dazzler and Longshot with a couple of close to Outback era figures with Punk, Storm, and Havoc. Longshot does come off slightly short here. I think it's more head size. Again, when it comes to Longshot, smaller than the rest. Because I always think of Cyclops as tall. Wolverine is short, so relative scale, this works. But I don't know, I can't help it. I, again, it may be the head size. And then here's Disco Dazzler and Shatterstar. I, <laughs> it's a tie between these two designs, I think. I love Disco Dazzler, but I also love Outback Dazzler. And again, 80s, 90s, maybe? Hmm. So at the end of the day, this is exactly what I wanted. Kinda, mostly. Yeah, I'll get it off my chest. I didn't need this. <laughs> I don't even know if I want it now, but I'll find something to do with it. I already knew what I was getting into with Mojo, but I didn't expect to like this version this much. The deeper yellow, the splotches on the skin, but I think more than anything, it's the extra hints of color in the wiring. That just does it for me. Long shot, yeah, like I said, there's a retail version coming. I could have completely skipped this set. There's something about that white star. It's not a huge thing. I'm okay with the yellow too, but I, I kind of needed that. Because now that I have it open, the big draw is Dazzler. If I'm going to build an Outback X-Men, I needed this version. What it breaks down to is $55, $25, $25. That's $105. The set is about uh, $132. That leaves, what, $27 somewhere in there for this Wolverine and the elaborate packaging with all the retro goodness. I'm going to end up keeping this just because it's clever. It's slick. It, it it hits me right in the nostalgia feels. But really what it comes down to is convention exclusive. That's the extra price. Yeah, the fancy packaging, the extra paint hits, but con exclusive is where the extra dollars come from. It's been the same for years and it's no different here, except we're in a year where the prices are already raising out from under us. So, I mean, all that together, expensive set. But like I said, if you're happy with this, and you can wait for the retro long shot, and you're okay with Dazzler wearing a jacket, having short in hair, whatever, then go ahead and skip this. If you enjoyed the overview, comment, like, subscribe. Much, much love to the plus. If you're interested in seeing videos early or in a position to help out the channel, patreon.com. But wherever you're watching this, I'll always catch you on the foosh. The more I mess with this, the more I kind of hate it. <laughs> Hate's a strong word. It's very rare that I hate something, but I have no use for this. This just added some costs. I would have liked to see. If I'm getting X babies, I want the toddler versions from this era. Not anime, not cartoony, just child versions of the X-Men. And when it comes to that, I'd be okay with those being plastic slugs like this Wolverine. I just want them to stand around this mojo. Do we need a statue multi-pack of X babies in all their 80s goodness? Yeah, the answer to that question is yes. <laughs>